It's Sunny and Finn's Wrestling and Video Game Podcast. This week, we discuss Survivor Series, NXT TakeOver Toronto, as well as the following, War and Smackdown. It's like 20 hours of wrestling, excuse the breath. It's too much. Too much wrestling. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 40 of the Sunny and Finn Show. I'm Sunny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello! How are you? Very good, thank you. The big 4-0. I can't believe we've done 40 episodes. Of <laughs> I know, crazy. Didn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Like this, I think it, that's a testament to how quick this year has gone. Yeah, seriously, so like quick. It's completely flowing, and we're 40 episodes deep in this podcast. Yeah, craziness. It's almost like almost been a year now, isn't it? Yeah. Craziness. We're approaching our podcast birthday. Yay! That's good times. <laughs> yeah. Big things coming in the next uh, couple of months potentially. Yeah, big things. Big things. We can't share them with you now because we don't have proper details, but we're uh, we're working on stuff. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> 40 episodes though. I know, crazy. A it's a wonderful times. episode. Yeah. A lot of illness. <laughs> a lot of illness. <laughs> a lot, a of, lot of illness. A lot of divas. Divas. <laughs> a lot of dick jokes. Yep. <laughs> There's more to come. More to come. More dick jokes. Always with the dick jokes. Always more dick, dick jokes. <laughs> always <laughs> more dicks. <laughs> yeah, always more dicks. <laughs> 2017 is going to be year of the dick jokes. Yeah. Year of the dick. The year of the Sunny and Finn dick jokes. <laughs> this is, this is, yep, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, we, changed, we changed the name of the show. That's a big announcement. Yeah, that's Sunny it. Finn yeah. Dick that, jokes. that was the big things we were working on. We were going <laughs> to save it for next year, but we just spoiled it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, well. <laughs> uh, speaking of dicks. <laughs> speaking of dicks. Uh, have you seen the new spec savers ever? Um, I haven't. I'm not sure what has to do with dicks. But, um, um, oh, you're about to find out. I'm about to find out. So, uh, in the new Specsavers advert, uh-huh. I saw it yesterday, and like uh, Lottie had to rewind it so I could watch it uh, again. <laughs> um, so they're in a, like a museum, uh-huh. and the security guards going around flicking the light switches off at night. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm laughing thinking about it. <laughs> and like he flicks one thing, but it, it's not a light switch. <laughs> it's the dick of a statue. <laughs> 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 and then there's another statue sitting down that's like got his hand over its face uh, and then like as the camera pans out uh, on the wall in the background there's a, a picture of a cock yeah <laughs> like uh, a cockerel yeah. a, a cockerel okay uh, so, yeah yeah I get it <laughs> dick jokes oh man fucking dick jokes <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ <laughs> they that's must awesome. listen to our show and think, they must yeah dicks are so funny this... I mean they're not wrong <laughs> No, they're not wrong. I mean, dicks are very, very funny. <laughs> Crazy. That's awesome. But that's my favourite advert of the year. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, everyone talks about the John Lewis advert and the Sainsbury's advert and the Coca-Cola advert for Christmas. But until you've seen the Specsavers Dicks advert, <laughs> you've not seen a good advert. Yeah. I'll turn it down later. Definitely do. Yeah. And then report back. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> This is the Sunny and Finn Show. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts every single Friday across podcast services everywhere. Yeah. One fall. One fall. <laughs> Enzo had his dick out on the roll this week. He did, yeah, he did, yeah. That was the thing. You know Vince loved it. Yeah, he does. He did. Loved his head off. He, he thought of it. He was like, he, he just know. You almost like after years and years of watching wrestling, you almost know the thought process has gone into it. Yeah, seriously. It's like, yeah. You know what's funny? We're going to have Enzo yeah. walk down the hall with his dick out. Yeah, hilarious. And it's going to see Lana. Yeah, Lana will be there. And Risa will be mad. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and they're going to look at this dick. <laughs> and everyone will be laughing. They will laugh. I did. Because I'm a genius. Honest, I yeah, I did too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit. Um, Finn, what have you been playing this week? Um, well, I'm playing a lot, actually. I'm playing uh, Finnish Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Uh, gets easier as it goes on, thank goodness, because Jesus Christ, the beginning was impossible. Did you enjoy the uh-huh. campaign in the end? Um, it gets better. Uh, but the ending is like super depressing. It's like, oh, I did it. <laughs> yeah, yay, I, I win. Oh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I finished it, but oh. yeah, it I haven't finished it yet. I will. <laughs> um, it didn't fill me with that. Yeah, I did it. Yes, I beat the game. It's like, oh, I, I think it's over now. I guess I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be on Timefall now, I guess. Um, but yeah, I wasn't playing Timefall 2, which I'm enjoying far more, uh, personally. It's just more fun. The stuff you can do is more fun. Um, like one of the first things I did, one of the other parts of the story, was like I wall ran, I jumped, kicked some guy in the head, and then used my shotgun to shoot the other two guys that were standing there. It's like, oh man, that was awesome. It's the if I do that in Call of Duty, I would have half to half the ball. They would have seen me immediately, span around, and shot me in the head, and I'd be dead. They absolutely <laughs> would. That would have definitely happened. Yeah, and I would have tried to wall win, I would have just fallen off because wall winning sucks in that game in Infinite Warfare. You see, <laughs> I mean. 
considering they ripped it off Titanfall, <laughs> yeah. you would think they would at least make it a, a, a make an attempt to make it better. Yeah, seriously, it just it lasts like two seconds and it like, sucks. And the yeah, it doesn't jump. last very long at all, actually. Yeah, and the boost jump is like worthless. It's weird because you have to time it strangely. Yeah. You're, there's like a little meter. Like it's it's so unnoticeable, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like when it's Titanfall, you press X twice and you double jump. And yeah. It's fine. It feels great. Um, I, I like, I, I mean, I know we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but I do prefer the Call of Duty campaign. But I think it's more down to me uh, being a bit of a miserable bastard <laughs> and wanting to just destroy everything and everyone that's fair like if I could play Call of Duty from the Jon Snow perspective <laughs> I think I'd have a wonderful time <laughs> probably would yeah it'd be funny I'd have a gay old time <laughs> yeah um, but yeah I just I don't know enjoy I enjoy like big giant robots and the setting there's always setting more but it could, that's, could, that's, that's fair enough could, I mean, it's to personal preference isn't it? the setting is beautiful yeah it's super cool uh, what else have we been playing and we tried the multiplayer you tried the multiplayer for the first oh, time yeah. Last night, um, how do you? What do you think to the multiplayer? Uh, it's really fun. Yeah, played some hard point, hard point domination. Yeah, I'm hard point. I'm hard point. That's the one. Uh, yeah, that's super fun. Uh, first couple of matches are a bit rough because I didn't know what I was doing cause for the first time. Yeah, I wanted to go into it, and yeah, so much fun. And uh, yeah, thanks to anyone who uh, joined in on that. Yeah, it was good. Um, first time streamed to Twitch as well. Yeah, we did uh, like a dual stream, which was strange. Yeah, a bit weird, but, but it, it seemed to work. Seemed to work. Um, we'll try again. There's a few little bits we need to iron out, but. I think it worked all in all. Yeah. So I streamed my perspective of the session to Twitch TV, Twitch TV slash Sunny Finn play. That's the one. And uh, Finn streamed his perspective, his noob perspective <laughs> on Time for Multiplayer. Yep. To YouTube.com forward slash Sunny Finn play, and it was it was quite cool. We were sort of, I mean, I had both streams on my laptop, and you had both streams in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people were watching both, so it, it worked because that's what we wanted out of it. Yeah. Um, it's hard to get Twitch off the ground, and we, we yeah, do say definitely. this a lot, but it is. Yeah, so hard. But it's something we're, we're absolutely going to work on going yeah, forward. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I'm glad you... I, I, I really love the time for what we play. Yeah, it's so fun. Um, I was speaking of Call of Duty as well, and played the uh, VR Jackal Assault on PS4. PS4. What did you think <laughs> to it? Uh, really fun. I liked it a lot. Uh, graphically, probably one of the most impressive looking VR games. Um, yep. There's no blow in this at all. It's Super good, uh, yeah. We enjoyed it. I want a full game of that, please. Yeah, the, the immersion <laughs> is pretty cool. good. Uh, yeah. It is very short, though. It's, it's super short, but it's like the feeling of looking around the cockpit and like finding stuff to shoot at. That was cool. Yeah, that was cool. Simple but cool. I like it. Cool. What else have we been playing? Um, I think that's about it, really. How about you? Um, I've been playing a lot of Watch Dogs. Um, oh, yeah. I've not had as much fun with any other game as I have with that this year. Awesome. It's so good. Like, it looks really good. And I'm not even playing the story missions. I'm playing... I'm, I, I put Watch Dogs on and I'm like, I've got loads of story missions to do. But I'm like, I don't want to do that. I want to go... I, I just, so I just drive around the city, fucking around, doing graffiti, uh, picking random people up, taking them and doing whatever they want to do and hacking people's phones, seeing what they've been up to, stealing their money, all that sort of <laughs> stuff. And it's just so much fun. Yeah. You can lose a lot of hours to it. Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, on better one, actually. I wasn't well, like, going into expecting nothing because the first one was so kind of well, dull. Exactly the same, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hated the first one. I know we, we talked about I, I touched on it last week, but I, it was boring. Yeah, seriously. And but downbeat. And I, I know I've just said I'm a miserable bastard. <laughs> Aiden Pierce is a much more miserable bastard than I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just wasn't fun. But Watch Dogs do really injects the fun back into it. Yeah. Um, so just for that reason alone, I think it's it's well worth playing. Yeah. Agreed. Um. What else have I been playing? I've started... Uh, I got the Assassin's Creed Ezio collection for my birthday. Oh, yeah. And I've started Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, I've not noticed any garbage glitches <laughs> or anything like that in it. Um, in fact, the uh, the city of Florence, which I think is the, where the second one is based. I think so. I think it looks great. Cool. And um, it's, it's, it's a great game. It really yeah, is excellent. a really superb game. Um, what else have we been playing? I feel like I've been playing loads. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I've been playing. Uh, you know when I mean, you have that thing when you just you feel you know you've been playing loads of games <laughs> yeah. and you just sort of forget uh, Titanfall 2 we've been playing um, yeah played some Titanfall 2 with you mm-hmm. played WWE do we, yep um, the new Legends pack came out yesterday I've, uh, tried, I've tried two characters on it cool in fact I was Sid Vicious against Brutus the Barber Beefcake <laughs> nice and one match but I was super tired last night when I was playing it cool um, it's fine Sid Vicious looks nothing like him <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're promising from uh, the DLC for WWE 2K17. Yeah. Yeah, we played a lot of WWE. Uh, 
mainly for streaming purposes. Play Titanfall, which uh, I love the multiplayer for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried um, yesterday the NBA 2K VR experience. Oh, yeah. How was it? It's... I, I liked it. Um, what disappointed me the most about it is the fact that you don't use the move controllers. Oh, yeah. That's a bit rubbish. Use the, the control pad. Yeah. And that takes away a lot of the immersion for me because I know I'm standing there holding the control pad. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, whereas when you've got the move controllers and you're sort of using your hands to move around and stuff... You know the the immersion's there because you feel like you're actually doing it. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong; uh, the pressure is still there when you you know trying to aim the three point shots and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's it's worth. I mean, it was eleven ninety nine. Right. So I mean, it's it's worth a look because it's cool. You got the whole arena, and you got the feel of the all star stuff and cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I finished Job Simulator as well. Got the Platinum Trophy for that. Sweet. Super easy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But it was a great game. So much fun. Probably the most fun on VR so far. Yeah, that's it. Just because it's so funny. Like, it's funny, it's, yeah. The way, the, the way it's written is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like, the way the computer talks. Like, <laughs> this is an accurate version of Office Worker. And stuff <laughs> like that. And it's just really funny. Yeah. I'll check that one out as well. Yeah, you should. I mean, uh, the Black Friday sale starts on PlayStation tomorrow. So oh, maybe... Yeah. Uh, you might be able to pick up uh, a couple of cheapos. Sweet. Of course. So, yeah. Yeah. A couple of bits of gaming news this week. Nothing too major. Just a couple of bits that I wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, what have you got? Have you got anything first? Um, I noticed that uh, Persona 5 has been delayed from February the 14th to April the 2nd. 2nd? 2nd, 3rd? 4th. There you go. That sucks. It sucks super hard. Uh, I've got the uh, special super edition on pre-order. Uh, super looking forward to it, but yeah, alas, I'm waiting in a couple months. It sucks, but I'll go find the Magic 15 to time you over until then, I guess. And as we always say, if it's delayed, it's delayed for a reason. Yeah. And hopefully, I mean, I have, I'm i not a Persona fan. You should be. But you hear people talking about it, and there is no doubt in my mind that this is going to be very special. Yes. I mean, it's already out in Japan, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. And uh, to my knowledge, it is quite special. Yeah, yeah, people have been... Uh, very positive about it, yeah. Um, so it's worth waiting for. Yeah, I think so. Also, just said as an apology, they're um, including the uh, Japanese voiceover track. That's correct. Um, yeah. Which is cool if you're into that. Um, so what, what does English, that mean? Personally. Does that mean you get the the speaking in Japanese but with English subtitles? Yeah, pretty much. So why would people want that? Is that do you, do you know why people would want that? Um, it's to do with like I don't know. It's set in Japan, so it kind of kind of makes sense that you know they speak Japanese. And, I don't know, some people prefer just, like, the original Japanese audio just because it sounds better, I guess. I don't know. I don't get it personally. I guess it's like watching a Japanese movie, but when it's English dubbed. Yeah. It's garbage. Kind of. But the English dub in presenting games has always been excellent. Like, the English in 3 and 4 have been, like, perfect spot on. Oh, I think in games it works. I don't think it works in movies. Yeah. Well. Uh, but I guess it's sort of like that. If you want that, like, I, I don't watch foreign movies with English dubbed over. I watch it with the original voices with subtitles yeah same I just think it's a better experience I don't feel that way about a game but yeah me too it's, it's each to their own yeah. I guess really yeah it's whatever, yeah, whatever you into and I know a lot of people have been asking for it so it's cool for them fair enough uh, to get that and also download a free theme for one day only uh, which will already be already ended by the time this podcast comes out but that's Thursday that uh, comes out so uh, yeah if you got free on theme. it well done yeah good job well spotted <laughs> well spotted yeah well spotted thanks for listening to this podcast in the future and then going back in time to download <laughs> yeah. the Persona 4 4? 5 5 yeah. theme yeah might be only anyway so yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah how about what news have you got any um, yeah you Uncharted you're... 4 um, has a it's like a horde mode <clears throat> coming like a multiplayer oh, yeah. it's called Uncharted 4 survival sweet so, so you can either do it solo or you can do it with uh, with three people okay so three one people. to three people. I don't know. I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I think if um, it's all you're playing on your own, you get two computer people. Ah, I see. Okay. So I guess at least it's not too bad. Yeah. But um, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. The pirates and stuff look very cool. Cool. So sure. I mean, um, if it's free, we'll play it. Yep. Yeah. And we'll stream it. Yeah, sure. Because um, I like and try for multiplayer. I think it's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. something that didn't need to be there. It was very good. Yeah. But I, I, I thought that on, I think it was Uncharted 2 as well, that multiplayer. And yeah. I thought it was good then, but I never never touched it in, I mean, I, I think I probably played it a handful of times in 2. Yeah, I didn't play a whole lot, but I did enjoy it. Never touched it in 3, um, but I knew it was there. Mm-hmm. 
Mainly because they throw beaters down your throat. Like, oh, God, yeah. They're going, oh, here's a, here's a beater for the, the multiplayer. It's like, I don't want this. I want the, the full game. <laughs> yeah. I want to beat Nathan Drake. I don't want to beat Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Uncharted 4 has multiplayer, which I tried very recently, actually, and right. uh, I thought it was excellent. I, I love the mechanics. I think they work so well in third person. Yeah, cool. And the mechanics of the full game work really well in a multiplayer environment. Yeah, yeah, they got the hook and everything. Things to swing from. Yeah, which I think is great. It may, I was thinking about it earlier, and actually, like, I want to. I would quite like to stream it. Yeah, you can stream it. Yeah, so I think it's very, very cool. Fun. Cool. Maybe it could be our next multiplayer Twitch experiment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. But uh, yeah, um, there is that. So it's coming out in December. Sweet. Uh, apparently, they're going to announce the Uncharted Four single player DLC Ooh. at PSX next month as well. Excellent. Okay. So. Um, and apparently it's going to star Sam and Sully. Right. Because Uncharted 4 spoilers, if you haven't played it by now, what are you doing? Um, at the end of the game... Everybody uh, dies. Sam and Sully uh, <laughs> go off and be best buds somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah. Sounds about right. I sure. remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, more Uncharted is, is good with me. Yeah, same. Yeah. More good stuff is good. For sure. <laughs> This is the most this this little next little tidbit mm-hmm. is the thing I'm most excited about this week gaming news. <laughs> oh yeah, um, not many people played it because it was on the Wii U and it was a Wii U exclusive. Oh yeah, but uh, Lego City Uncovered. Yeah, undercover. Undercover, I think. Undercover, yeah. yeah undercover, yeah. Uncovered would be the porn version. <laughs> porn version, yeah. Yeah, don't watch that. Under the covers. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's an open world. Yeah, Lego City Undercover is an open world action game starring uh, Legos. Yep. And it's superb. It's, like, so fun. it's a Wii U exclusive and it shouldn't have been a Wii U exclusive. <laughs> yeah. Um it would have that would have been fine if people bought the Wii U and they it's... didn't. So um but yeah, it's really, really cool. It's coming to PS4 in April. Um it's also coming to Xbox One, PC and Nintendo Switch as well. Oh cool, okay. So they're uh, bringing it bringing it back for the Switch. Bringing it back. Sweet. Which shows how much faith they had in the Wii U. <laughs> but yeah. The fact that they need to put it on the other console to make it worthwhile. Yeah. But uh, that is awesome. I'm I'm really stoked about playing that again. Yeah. It's a fun, so fun I little did game, play yeah. It on Wii U. Yeah, same, yeah. Um uh, great to play a game with trophies and all achievements. That's the main thing. Yeah, seriously, like, pretty much. When this was announced, I was like, I guess play this with trophies. That is yeah. awesome. Because <laughs> when it's I really played it on game. Wii U, I was like, this should probably have trophies. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Because, uh, yeah, I was like, I could get, get 100% and get all the things, but uh, there's no really reason to. Exactly. Who's going to know? <laughs> see, and we, we always stress the importance of trophies on here, yeah. on this show. But it's so true. It gives you a reason to play it. Exactly, yeah. It's like, like Dragon Rice. Oh, look, look at the cool thing I did. I got proof and everything. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I've got the platinum for this game. And I know it means nothing to you, but to us, we're, we're heroes yeah, in the gaming world. <laughs> we're the best <laughs> at this little game. <laughs> yeah. Trophies uh, matter. They do. Big time. Big time. Again, there isn't really that much, at least not uh, that's worth talking about. Yeah. But um, let's talk about the Xbox Games with Gold. Mm, good month this month. It's uh, coming up for December. Yes, very and good month. You're absolutely correct. It is a good month. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> it is Take Lego City Undercover. Cool. Just, look, just looking at my iPad. <laughs> so, Xbox One. Um, of course, you get double the games because it plays backwards compatible games for 360. Yay. So you get Sleeping Dogs. Excellent. The excellent Sleeping Dogs. If you haven't played it, you no, are you a Sleeping Dog. Yeah, yeah. Hooray. Well done. <laughs> you did it. You brought it back. I did. I yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was playing that again for sure. The also excellent Outlast. Yep. Which I played through recently on PS4, which was superb. Yep. Really superb. Um, it's got a picture of you on the picture here as well. Oh yeah, cheers. I know, I know, I've seen the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just on me. Yeah, it does look <laughs> like you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Outland on Xbox 360, which I think I've played on PlayStation 3. Yeah, uh, me too. it's like a, a very colourful looking platformer, and the guy's got a sword on the front cover. Yeah, it's a cool game. So you know it's good. Yeah, yeah. That's a good cool game. Yeah, worth one to check out if you haven't played it. And this for me is the big one. Oh yeah. Motherfucking Burnout Paradise. Woo! Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, great game. It's just come to Xbox 360, back, sorry, Xbox One backwards compatible. Uh, why you would buy it, unless you already had it, when you know it's coming to Xbox One, Games with Gold. Yeah. Great what game. What a great game that is. Yep. Agreed. Uh, I can't wait to fire it up. Hear that Guns N' Roses song on the intro. Yeah. I'm going to be stoked then. I'm going to be like, right, this is awesome. Yeah. It's great. A classic Burnout formula in like an open world. That's the best one as well. Yeah. 
Um, oh. The first one on 360 was really good. The, f- the first one is burnout, awesome, but burnout it's revenge. so basic, though. No, I mean, the first one on 360 was just like Burnout Revenge. Burnout something. Takedown? Takedown. One of them. Burnout 3, Takedown? One of Burnout 3. It was Burnout the fourth one, but that caused anything else. I think it's Revenge. I'll check it. I'll look at that. Okay. Look quickly. Um, <laughs> which one was... Was 3 Takedown, then, was it? I think or so. Was 2 Takedown? I don't remember. Uh, oh, yeah, Burnout Revenge was the one on 360. On PS2 as well. PS2 and 360. And probably PS3 What's as the well. front cover? Um, it's this. That one. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's basically my favourite one. But Paradise is excellent as well. <clears throat> yeah, I love Paradise. I just, it's just a fun game. It's like a fun playground of driving around, smashing boards, destroying other cars, destroying your own car, and winning insanely fast races. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. I can't wait to play it again. Yeah, same. Uh, but now 3 will take down, yes. Um, was that on... What was that on? Oh, on PS2 and like Xbox, Xbox yeah. God, if you look back at the first, like the the evolution of Burnout, like through the years, <laughs> yeah, like the first one is so basic, but it I is. loved it. So yeah, same here, so cool. It's like the first one of the time, making like crash into things and like yeah. it's like cinematic view. And it's like, oh, it's so cool. Yeah, and like two, did two introduce the crash mode? Uh, I think so. I remember it definitely being there. I can't remember it was in the first one or not. Either way, yeah, like the Burnout franchise is so good. Criterion did an amazing job. Yeah, seriously. Of creating a new IP and just like evolving it the way it did. It's such a great franchise and I'm so happy that... Um, I mean, because there's going to be people out there who own Xbox Ones, kids, whatever, who have never played Burnout Paradise. Yeah, now they can and they should. You absolutely should. It's so good. Yeah. I imagine there are people that listen to this podcast because we do have, like, um, especially on YouTube, we have like some like quite a young audience yeah we've got like a mixture but we do have some young guys on there as well yeah who definitely wouldn't have played these games yeah probably not yeah we're too young so guys make a video (laughs) yeah end of days if you listen to this podcast (laughs) go and play this game yes when it's free absolutely that's it for the gaming news I think yeah pretty much not really no but yeah we're going to dive straight into the wrestling the wrestling um, there's a mixed bag. Yeah. Now uh, wrestling, this, I mean, if you, if you take NXT, Survivor Series, Raw and SmackDown, that's a lot of wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Some might say too much. And as you can imagine, our, our tiny little minds are <laughs> a little bit wrestling out. <laughs> a little bit. More wrestled out. Yeah. See, we, we did an NXT stream on Saturday and then NXT was on Saturday night. Yeah. We <laughs> did a, a Survivor Series stream on Sunday. And then Survivor Series was Sunday night. Yeah. And then when we'd watched Survivor Series, we had to contest with Raw and yeah, SmackDown. Raw. And it's just a lot of wrestling to take in. Yeah. And you you start to resent the wrestling when, you, when you've watched so much of it. Like, yeah. Why is this happening? <laughs> why, is it, uh, why is What is this bucket? <laughs> why is Enzo naked? <laughs> why is Enzo naked? Why is Rusev looking at his deal? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk about NXT TakeOver Toronto. Okay. Which was excellent. Yes, hard out of the weekend, by far. Oh, by it's not even close. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, have you got the results there? I do. Okay, let's go for it. So the first match was uh, Bobby Woo versus Ty, the Perfect Ten Dillinger, or Tim Dongalinger, as he oh, <laughs> called Tim Dongalinger from uh, <laughs> our NXT Takeover Toronto stream this last week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a time. What a time. <laughs> Tim Dondalinga. <laughs> uh, love it. <laughs> um, cool entrances. Yes, very cool. At least um, for Bobby Roode, anyway. Yeah, he had like choir singers and whatnot. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. Nice touch. And uh, uh, Tim Tim Dondalinga had his like, light up jacket with his collar and stuff. Yeah. It's cool. Um, I wish WWE did a, like, a brand of dressing gowns. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know why they don't because they can make a killing off it. Yeah, yeah, like Rude on the back and yeah, glorious on the back of your. Or oh yeah, glorious. Of course. You can have about fifty different Ric Flair ones. Or <laughs> yeah. Macho Mount. You could you could go crazy with it. Yeah, seriously, I'd buy one. Yeah, I would as well. Yeah, I would mean, absolutely. I've got a Rocky yeah. Three one. Instead of someone come out my my bedroom, I'd do like the Bobby Rude pose and just like turn around slowly. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd like to be honest. I'd get home from work and just wear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, all my other clothes would just be gathering dust because I'd just be wearing that all the time. <laughs> nice. Yeah, me too. <laughs> WWE, you're missing a trick. You really are, yeah. Get on that. Get on it. Uh, but yeah, it was a really good match, I thought. Um, I thought the wrong person won because Ty was super over and needed to win more. 
because just like build his character, I guess. I don't know. Because just going into it, it's like, if I don't win this, I'm a loser. And then he lost. It's like, oh, I guess he's a loser then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange one. I mean, the momentum is firmly behind Bobby Roode. But Bobby Roode didn't really need to win. Yeah, exactly. Because Bobby, Bobby Roode is just fine anyway. Exactly. <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it's awesome enough that he's in NXT. Yeah. So he probably didn't need to win. But Ty, he hasn't won in a long time, especially a high profile match. Yeah, seriously. Um, so he could have done with winning this. But did you get the impression after the match when they were all still sort of clapping him and all this sort of stuff in the ring that he may be off to the main roster? Um, yeah, potentially. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be against it, but I'd be worried because of guys like um, bloody uh, Tyler Breeze and whatnot getting lost in the shuffle and uh, mm-hmm. Apollo Crews and all that. Um, well, I mean, Apollo Crews is the is the real standout there. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Um, and Baron Corbin's got a prominent spot on SmackDown, so he's gone yeah. up and he's done good things. Crews is, for me, a, 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 a far superior athlete, mm. probably a better wrestler. Yeah. Um but for some reason, it's just not worked out for him. So yes. I, like you, would fear for Ty Dillinger going up to the main roster. Yes, people, 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 the people of Canada obviously loved him because he wouldn't shut up with a ten, ten chance all night, all <laughs> weekend even. Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> Raw, SmackDown, Survivor yep. Series, everything. <laughs> Which is great, I thought. Yeah, I loved it. It was awesome, but yeah, I I fear for Ty. Hopefully they've got something planned for him in NXT before he goes up to the in, uh, main roster. Who knows? And I know I'm going to bang this drum again. Okay. But it's guys like Ty Dillinger in NXT, which is the reason for NXT needing a mid-tier championship. Yeah, got a point. It's yeah. I I, I kind of I just feel like it has to happen because there's so many guys in that mid card that deserve a bit more recognition. Yeah. Like I mean, even like you could put the belt on only Lorcan and people like that, and it gives them something to do while Joe and Nakamura really dominating the main event scene the world title scene yeah yeah um, I think it needs to happen but uh, whether it will it's been a long time I've been saying it for a long time and it hasn't come to fruition so um, make it happen come on yeah that would definitely help I think uh, but yeah as predictions uh, yeah, predictions uh, you, and can't, you can't say uh, words today uh, uh, can't do words How about, <laughs> I can't words good <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as predictions go uh, you and Steve both said Bobby Roode win uh, I said Ty would win, so you and Steve break at the point there. And I get nothing. Nada. Nada. Uh, the next match <laughs> next match was uh, the Authors of Pain versus TM61, uh, with Paul Ellering suspended above being in a weird cage thing, which is I weird. really <laughs> hope that this wasn't just to promote that toy they've just bought. Oh, it absolutely was. <laughs> even it, when they, it really was, wasn't it? Yeah, because like when even they were talking about it, they had a, like a little toy thing set up in the office. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course they did. Yeah, yeah. Because that that that's what even that's what brought it up. Yeah. Because yeah. TM sixty one, I remember when you were in these. Because they'd done it before. Paul Ellering was suspended above the ring, um, in like a shark cage. Why is a shark cage? Like, it's just a cage. <laughs> just a cage. Yeah. <laughs> just just a, a person sized cage. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, and Paul Ellering's done that stunt before, and fine. Uh, but they've got a toy coming out uh, with a shark cage again why mm. um, so you can slingshot wrestlers at it yeah and then it falls down we don't know why like uh, so yeah I don't know if you saw the advert but at the end of that like Roman Reigns wins the championship in this cage thing and standing on top of the thing like no not not anyone but come bloody Reigns come on <laughs> <laughs> even though it's just a toy it's like oh come on <laughs> <laughs> gotta promote that Reigns so yeah gotta promote gotta it. make him look strong in the, in <laughs> yeah. the toy commercial <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah Paul Ellering was suspended above the ring for literally no reason yeah could have banned him from ringside but no go up in the cage yeah don't make it simple by banning him from ringside <laughs> yeah maybe this should happen all the time like um, like when it's so obvious like what was that like when Ric Flair was kept interfering in all these matches, oh, yeah. even though he was banned from ringside, they kept running down. Yeah, suspend him above the ring in the a shark cage. cage. Yeah, why not? <laughs> maybe we should. Maybe this is what should happen all the time. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Now it's gone from being a stupid idea that promotes toys to the best idea ever, being something that could actually not ruin wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I feel sorry for the people who were sat in that corner where it was. Oh yeah, because the structure was bloody huge. It was massive, yeah. So huge that one of the one of TM sixty one climbed up it and jumped off. I loved it. The crazy flippy thing. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I mean, they had to do something like <laughs> Of course, yeah. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't you see the toys. You can't block someone's view for no reason. Yeah. You see the toys, like, uh, someone's jumping off that, for sure. 
wasn't going to be one of the authors of Pain, was it? <laughs> Definitely not, no. Imagine if it was. <laughs> yeah, not Jesus quite clearly, I thought, surely they're not going to do that. Yeah. These he's are start, big guys. But he started to climb, climb up it with uh, him on the back, in his back, yeah. didn't he? He's like, oh, Jesus Christ. What the hell are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> You're too big for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, I, th- I thought it was a good match again. Yeah, it was a great match. Um, towards the end of the match, uh, Ellering dropped a chain down from the cage. Ooh. Um, they, one, of the, one of the altar pain went to punch uh, GM61 and then he like, flew off his hand into the crowd I was like Jesus Christ be careful <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> luckily they don't get it where well, there's a blame there's a claim <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, but the altar pain ended up winning with uh, their double team like Russian next week slash clothesline thing and uh, yeah they won the Dusty Rhodes tag team classic tournament one thing that was uh-huh. weird for me about this uh, and it's not them winning so I mean I had that from the start because yeah. it, it almost seemed like not too obvious. It was too <laughs> obvious because yeah. they've been destroying everybody. Yeah. Now, they've been having really good matches. I mean, they had a good match against DIY mm-hmm. and they had a great match against TM61. But it's how they humanised them after, by when they were collecting the trophy, and like shaking hands with God oh, Dust yeah. and like being like really polite and friendly. It's like, these guys are fucking huge. It's... And I could kill you and snap that trophy. <laughs> yeah. And now they're shaking hands and like kissing babies and uh, shit. And it's like, what is this? Yeah, that was a bit weird. I agree. Just having like stare, stare Goldust down or something. I don't know. Beat him up. Or beat him up, yeah, why not? And his wife. What, what are you going to do? <laughs> beat them super heels. <laughs> yeah. And then but, Paul, um, Paul, Paul Enwing's like had a super serious face and then when Goldust went to shake his hand he's like smiling he's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's it, can. Yeah, Goldust like, bowed down to him as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, I, I, I've actually really warmed to the Authors of Pain. Yeah, me too. So, That'd uh, be cool. I'm fine that they won it. Yeah, me too. Um, TM61 TM have got a bright future. Yep, agreed. Very talented couple of guys. What's TM61 stand for? Because obviously before they were TMDK. Yeah, the Mighty Don't Neil. The Mighty Don't Neil, which they always say in their interviews. Yeah, I think the 61 is like their uh, dining code for Australia, I think they said. Right. So it's like the Mighty 61, I don't know. Who knows? Sure. It works for me. 619. 619, yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Um, After that, we had the match of the weekend, possibly match of the year, uh, DIY versus The Revival. Oh, God, what a match. Crazy good match. Um, Yeah, just uh, the best two out of three fours match. It was, yeah, incredible. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it's... Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. He, he, you can't praise this kind of thing. Like, if people question why you watch wrestling, these are the sort of <laughs> matches. Like, you compile, like, a uh, like a, a WWE Network playlist of that, the <laughs> when they fought each other, yep, Tommaso incredible. and Johnny, um, Nakamura versus Sami Zayn. Yep, just going to say that. It's so, like, yeah. he, you know, you can pop, notice how these are all NXT matches <laughs> or CWC, or CWC yeah. um, and not the main roster. Yeah. But, um, you know, the these matches are why we watch wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. So Superb. good. Superb. It had everything as well. Near falls. Um, it was just so good. I can't, yes, so I can't many praise it enough. So good. Uh, the first fall went to um, the revival with their shatter machine. Machine. Uh, second fall was uh, DIY with their super kick slash knee combo. And the third fall um, was like a double submission. Uh, both uh, DIY had both of uh, Revival in like an armbar thing. Like and, a triple uh, cross face. Yeah, pretty much. And they both tapped out at the same time. And both like holding each other's hands and no, don't tap out, don't tap out. And then they did. And it was awesome. It was super awesome. And I was so happy for uh, um, DIY. Yeah, me too. Like, they got... are my guys. Like Yeah. Like, from, from when they walked into <coughs> NXT, I was like, "These are these guys are awesome." Yeah. I love the Johnny wrestling chance. Mm-hmm. I love all of that, and I was just so happy to see him win because they really have done a lot for WWE this year. Yeah, for sure. They made uh, made it decent in the eyes of like indie wrestling fans. It's like, look, we have indie wrestling on WWE now. It's cool. Look how yeah, cool it is. And, <laughs> well, they are bringing that sort of indie style to WWE as well. Like, where yeah, it's like, you look at the main roster, and it is. They are wrestling very much a WWE style. Yeah. Which, even, even the cruiserweights have, um, have been yeah, they've even dumbed down. down the cruiserweights, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, on NXT, it seems like, it's like, right, you go out there and show us what, show people why they still love wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't watch the main roster and be like, I love wrestling. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I love wrestling so much. It's like, I tolerate wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> It's we just, do a wrestling podcast. So yeah. We have to tolerate wrestling. I have to watch this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, super cool match. Uh, part of the match for me was uh, the rival trying to do like DIY's finisher and then them countering into the chat machine. Yes. That was super cool. Uh, 
Yeah. I love it. Love it. Congratulations to Tommaso and Johnny Gargano. It was just so awesome to see them win it. And yep. I feel like they deserve it after the year that they've had. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Um, I'll try the predictions to go. Um, well, last match before, we all said uh, all the pain to win. So we got a point for that. So that's uh, two points to you and Steve, one point to me. And for DIY versus Revival, um, uh, you and me both said Revival. So we both get a point. Oh, DIY rather. We both get a point. And Steve said uh, Revival. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's uh, three, two to you at the moment. It's going well for me. Going well. It's looking good. It is, it is looking good. Um, so the next match was the uh, Asuka versus Mickey James for the women's title. And uh, it was good. It was great, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Mickey's in great shape. Yep, yeah, he's very good. Um, I'd be very interested in seeing Mickey James more. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised if he turns up uh, more. I don't know if see on the main roster. But she hasn't lost a step. And no, she she put on a, just a, a soup. She just she showed why they would would pick her. Yep. Yeah. So it was great. Yeah, it was excellent. Um, Mickey was very uh, dominant, surprisingly, throughout uh, a lot of the match. Uh, a lot of submissions counted into pins. Um, and at the end, I like, counted the Asuka lock into a pin, and then she counted that back into the Asuka lock. And then she tapped out, like, really quickly, mm. which is a bit weird, a bit weird, a bit weird way to end it. Um, but yeah, it's a good match otherwise. Um, Asuka won. And after the match, uh, Ricky James went to shake Asuka's hand. And instead of uh, shaking her hand, she just held the title up to say, yeah, look at me, I'm the champion. What do you think to this? Um, I think it's setting up a heel turn. For sure, for Asuka. Yeah, do you think she's going for the sort of uh, arrogant, nobody can beat me type champion? Yeah, probably. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, I'm okay with it. But yeah. I don't think she's super over with the crowd, Asuka. I mean, I think mm. people like Asuka and they respect her wrestling style. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think she's super over as a face. I um, think yeah, you're probably right. She may have more momentum behind her as a heel. Yeah. So if somebody... Uh, so that people will be rooting for someone else to beat her. Yeah. But she keeps winning. Yeah. That sort that's... of heel champion. Yeah, that'd be good for Asuka, actually. Good uh, character. Uh, yeah, I agree. Character uh, stuff, yeah. Um, but I really like the match. I mean, I, I do really like Asuka. I think she's yeah. great. Uh, but I also like Mickey James. There's a little bit of me that wanted Mickey to win, but I knew that wasn't really that realistic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if Mickey comes back... Um, I think it should probably be on the main roster because she suits, she she belongs there. Yeah, for sure. She, can she could go on SmackDown or Raw and mm. uh, be a part of the title picture and it wouldn't seem out of place. No, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you all had uh, ask for that match, so you all got a point there. That's 4-3 uh, to you. Um, so let's leave this with our main events. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Samoa Joe. What a match. Excellent match. A match with Joe. What's what showcase with Joe? <laughs> Very good. <sighs> I like work. I work well. Do you think Joe's has had the best year out of anybody in WWE? This <laughs> year? Uh, yeah, I think so. Just from like a character building perspective, and just like what a monster he is, he's turned into now. Character building perspective, absolutely. Yeah, and wrestling perspective as well, because it's been incredible. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but yeah, from a character building perspective, I think Joe has been second to none. Yeah, seriously. Because every feud that he's been given, he's taken it. <clears throat> And it's just been... I mean, he's been a heel now for since last year's Dusty Road. Since the end of last year's Dusty Road's Tag Team Classic. Yep, yep. When he turned on Finn. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's just not slowed up since. He's just been superb throughout his entire NXT run. Yeah. Slow start when he had his crap music. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I wish they played it in the match by accident. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I, I, how did they do that? I, I heard it. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? What the hell are they playing <laughs> this? Yeah, but um, Joe's been superb since he, his, his WWE run has been good. Yep. Slow start again. I'm, I'm putting that down to the music. Yeah, <laughs> it's surprised me. Actually. It just and WWE must have realised that it wasn't working for him. Yeah. So, and then they give him his pounding music, and everyone's like, "Oh, okay, some Joe. This is <laughs> yeah." People jump like Joe, Joe. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. do that before. It was awful. Yeah, it sucks. What were they doing? What <laughs> and they you realised how badly it sucked when they played at the end, and we're all like. What's that? Oh, what yeah. This? Yeah. But uh, no, Samoa has had uh, an absolutely superb year. Probably the best year out of anybody in WWE. You could probably include Nakamura, um, you know, in uh, the list of people who have had great years. Yeah. But um, Joe consistently has been just fucking outstanding. Yep. Agreed. Um, and yeah, great match. Uh, Joe ended up winning. So it's first person to beat Nakamura and his first ever two time NXT champion. Yes. Uh, good for Joe. And you said Joe would win. Do so you get another point? That's uh, five three to you, which means you get a whole point overall. 
And it's that been... is a clean sweep. A clean sweep, yes, boys yes. and girls. Every single one, right. Well That's done. That's the first one we've had, I think. I think so. Congratulations. Baby! Baby! But it brings our grand total to 10 points each. All tied up. Oof. Oof. This brings us Heading to... into the back end of the year, too. Yeah, yeah. It all comes down to... Um, it all comes down <laughs> to TLC, yeah. Roadblock, and whether the Shenmue collection <laughs> gets announced. Pretty much. So I've got a free point. So if you look at it that <laughs> way, it's 11-10 to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But we've got John Cena on Tony Hill. So that's another point to me. Oh, out yeah. That's never happening. Yeah. It was the last I've given up on it. You must have that point now. Yeah. Might 11 well. all. 11 all, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um it also got Last Guardian, how that reviews. It's still uh, outstanding. It's going to be interesting in a couple of weeks. Yes. Interesting indeed. People but, uh, aren't talking about it. Um, hmm. uh, I've seen yeah. some adverts on Facebook and stuff from PlayStation, and but not many people are talking about it. Yes. I, I think, uh, but I think Final Fantasy is overshadowing it for now. Yeah, you probably won't. Let's see what to that. So NXT was well, really outstanding on um, Saturday night. Sure. And it was a really great showcase. Maybe. Yep. Takeover is always good anyway. And uh, I'm a big champion for NXT. Mm-hmm. I imagine this week's NXT episode is going to be matches that were filmed in Toronto before yeah. Takeover. Maybe, yeah. Probably. So that means we're not going to really get, get get anything of any worth on TV for a few weeks. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Right. So this brings us to Survivor Series. Yep, yep. The 30th, 30th anniversary, is it? I think, yeah, I think so. Number 30. So the 30th anniversary of Survivor Series. And they've gone back to basics this year with it, with having the traditional Survivor Series tag team elimination matches. Yes, three of them, in fact. Yeah, there's three <laughs> on the show, and there's only six matches on the card. Yeah. Um, there are two um, pre-show matches, uh, like a uh, little cru- cruiserweight match. I and told you that would happen. Yeah, you did, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Kane versus Luke Harper for some reason which Kane won which made no sense what? Kane, Kane versus Luke Harper on the pre-show yep yeah, and Kane won uh, why? I know it's dumb super dumb uh, but yeah we'll skip those because who cares so um, <laughs> that's all they know what to do with the cruiseways <laughs> yeah pretty much at pay-per-views like, oh, just, just throw them all on the thing just yeah. chuck them all in a match together yeah it was a right match actually the cruiserweight match who um, did we have in the match well, so I'm going to guess the heel team was Gulak um Tony Nice and I don't know. <laughs> um, let's have a look. I can't actually remember. Uh, face team: Cedric Alexander, T.J. Perkins, and Noam Dar. Um, I'm desperately trying to find the bloody uh, notes now. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Which one? T.J. Perkins, Noam Dar versus Davari, Tony Nice, and Drew Gulak. Ah, Davari. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a decent match. Worth watching did, if you what, get. Did you say no, I'm Darwin, there? Yeah, he was okay. a face, face team. Um, but yeah, it was a decent match. If you've got spared like 10 minutes, you want to watch a cool match, check it out. Um, if you want to watch a cool, watered down cruiserweight match. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, it was alright. It's fine. Sure. Uh, yeah. If you want, if you got a spare, uh, five and a half minutes, go and watch, uh, Luke Carper versus Kane. <laughs> yeah. Or don't. And no one cares. <laughs> no one cares. Uh, it's made no sense. Anyway, the first match of the night. Was uh, the women's uh, Survivor Series match, five women match. You had a uh, team war, which was Nia Jax, Sasha Banks, Charlotte, Flair, Bailey, and Alicia Fox versus Team SmackDown, Carmella, Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, or was it, and Alexa Bliss. But unfortunately, uh, before the match, uh, somebody who we, we have yet to find out who, <coughs> Carmella, attacks, mm, could be, uh, attacked Nikki Bella backstage, and she was replaced with Natalia, who was originally the coach of the team. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think it was whatever. Natalia because she was the coach of the team she wanted to fight in the match. Yeah, yeah. It's either that or uh, Carmella, but yeah. yeah. Either way. Uh, I didn't like the match. No? No. Oh, I thought it was alright. I thought it was good. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe, it was, maybe I'm being harsh on it, but... Um, no, no. I'm shrugging like you can see me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shrug. <laughs> you can hear my shrug. Yeah. That silence you heard a minute ago was me shrugging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was okay. It was a bit sloppy. It, it didn't yeah. flow that well. Yeah, there was only one of the matches that I, one of the traditional matches that I f- did f- thought flowed think. well. <laughs> yeah, did think flowed well. That makes sense. We are good w- English words, talkers. Words, words good. Yes. Words good with we are. Yes. 
Thanks, Yoda. I thought it was okay. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to come out like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was alright. Um, as you said, there were a couple of sloppy moments, but it's, it tends to happen in these massive matches. It's hard to, hard to keep track of everyone all at once. Why have Alicia Fox? Why not have Dana in there? I don't understand. I'm so baffled by it. Yeah. Well, I've got to do something with her, I guess. Poor Dana. Yeah. Just fucking release Alicia Fox. <laughs> oh, poor Alicia. No, I'm sorry. She's got a weird belly button. <laughs> That's true. You don't like a weird belly button. She's got Can't an outie. <laughs> she does. Um, you got an innie or an outie? Hey. you got an innie or an outie? I have an innie. <laughs> I, I too have an innie. Good. No, you know, internet. Well done. Yeah, you, know, so, you know what kind of <laughs> belly buttons we've both got. Fun facts. Good times for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best facts here. Totally um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought it was okay. Uh, Jack looked... Nia no, Jack looks uh, very good and strong. Taking wait, out a lot of people. Wait. I mean, not wait wise. You know what I mean? Huh? You know what I mean? No, no, no. Wait. No, no. I didn't oh, wait as in wait. <laughs> Finn! What? You said it. <laughs> no! No, I said wait as in wait. I thought it was even waiting because it's so big. Oh, whatever. No, I don't... <laughs> Uh. <laughs> well, <laughs> what were you going to say? How uh. ridiculous did Nia Jax look in that raw t-shirt? Oh yeah, super crazy, super dumb. Yeah, she didn't look so, like super crazy. She didn't look super crazy, but it looks it looks super crazy and dumb. This is a good podcast. This is, uh, this is my podcast. favorite. This is one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, best part. Best, episode fourteen, <laughs> going strong. Best, yeah, best episode of the year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it looks stupid. Everyone else like made like a, some sort of effort. It's like they were told like backstage. Um, right, you have to wear red. <laughs> yeah. Or you have to wear your team colours. Nijax turns up. She had like a... <laughs> a black outfit. Black outfit. Red outline. It's like, yeah. come on, put this red t-shirt on. Like, like, fucking yeah. around. Yeah, everyone else like, took their shirts off before the match. You see the kept shirts on the whole time. It yeah, it weird. just looks so stupid. It was weird, yeah. It, it, I think that's maybe why I didn't like the match, because it threw me off so much. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Like, um, Nia shoehorned into this <laughs> bloody medium t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, at one point, it's like called double suplex on. Uh, I think it was like Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch. That was cool. Yeah, um, yeah, and um, yeah. yeah, it was it was okay. The last two people standing were um, Bailey and Charlotte, and uh, just as they were celebrating, Charlotte like immediately punched Be- uh, Bailey in the face <laughs> and attacked after the match. It was like, oh, this is my moment. I'm the champion. I'm the team captain. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. It was fine. It sets up a feud for them in the future. So it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I, there was something about me. It just didn't, it didn't click. It didn't seem right. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so we all said SmackDown will win that, so we all lose. We <laughs> never get a point. Good. Good start. Good start for us. Um, so, oh, where's the thing on? Sorry, bad notes. Apologies. <laughs> So the next match was The Miz versus The Miz, the Miz versus uh, Sami Zayn for the IC title. And yeah, it's a good match, I thought. Good match. Yeah, I thought the match was really good. Yeah. Um, I, again, I, I can't help but feel that they're dropping the ball with these matches. Like, <laughs> Maybe. Dro- especially the endings to these matches. Yeah. It's like, again, they've booked themselves into corners. They do it all the time. They did it again later on in the show. Yeah. And it's like... Oh shit! We've <laughs> said these things could happen. Yeah, we might actually have them happen. So. We they should probably happen, but we don't know what's going to happen if they do happen. Yeah, so don't make them happen. We'll it's, just we haven't thought behind our head. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. We we've not put any thought into this. We've put together what we think might be a good idea. Yeah, but beyond that, <laughs> we've thought nothing about it. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, it's a great match. Sami Zayn's excellent. And Miz has got a great uh, character building up right now. Yep. And, uh, yeah, super good match. Um, ended when Sami Zayn had the Miz in, like, a uh, sharp, sharpshooter. And uh, because it's a survivor series in Canada, they had to go with the Montreal screw job finish, didn't they? Um, so Miz rang the bell. So Sami Zayn released it thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, one. And then, uh, no, because uh, then the Miz rolled him up and for the three count, and that was the end. They That's need better. to stop this Montreal screw, screw job stuff. We understand. We we know it happens. You don't need to tell us every Survivor Series. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I'm in Canada. We've got to do it. Uh, so no, you don't. I think what we need to do <laughs> is go back and look at Survivor Series matches over the last 15 years. <laughs> yeah. It's count how many there's been. See how many times that they've used this same nonsense. Yeah. It'll be a lot. <laughs> yeah, it will be. In fact, they used it the year after. Oh, yeah. Survivor Series 98 when The Rock beat Mankind using a sharpshooter whilst 
Uh, Vince McMahon rang the bell to award the corporate champion, The Rock, the new, the championship. He did, yeah. Uh, State lighty WWE. <laughs> yep. <sighs> so uh, what do we have a prediction on that one? Um, oh, we both said Sam would, all said Sam would win because it seemed like the obvious choice. Um, but nope. Miz won, so no one's get a point again. It seemed like the right choice, though. Yeah, it, it made sense. Like, SmackDown was going in one direction by having the Cruiserweights, mm-hmm. and, you know, they would turn into that style show, like an NXT-style show, but for a couple of hours. Yeah. And Raw would have the heavyweights on it with, you know, two mid-tier titles and its universal title, and that would be where the, you know, for the big... The big boys. The big boys sort of thing. Um, and there would have been two <laughs> completely different shows, and that would have been great. Yeah. But... But nope. They're too scared to pull anything like this off. Yeah. Uh, the bookers need sacking. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. Hi, Wes and Ted. We, we do it for you. Yeah, look look how good wrestling would be if we booked it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be so good. Like, Sammy would be IC champion right now. Yep. Kalisa would be cruiserweight champion. Well, he wouldn't be. He'd have like, lost it on SmackDown because I'd have booked that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, none of these things happen. Nope. <laughs> so, uh, the next match... We had uh, the tag, 10 on 10 Tag Team Survivor Series Elimination Match. Um, reaching the Shining Stars, Cesaro and Sheamus, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, mm-hmm. The New Day, Enzo Mori and Big Cass, versus Heath Slater and Rhino, Hype Rose, Breezango, American Alpha and The Usos. This was the best out of the three Survivor Series Tag Team Matches. Hmm. It flowed the best. It just worked. I don't know if it's just because these guys are all tag teams and they all oh, probably. <clears throat> understand how tag team wrestling works. Yeah, that could be Even it. guys like Cesaro and Sheamus seem to have picked it up very well. Yeah, that's great. But, I don't know, it just seemed to flow the best. It was, it yeah, was good. Match. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, let's do. This match. was the one I was least looking forward to. I thought, <laughs> this is going to be garbage. They're throwing it together. It's 20-man. There's chaos. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was great. Yeah. Well, they did get rid of two teams right at the start. Um, Brizango got eliminated straight away. And then uh, the New Day got eliminated straight away by the Usos. It's yeah, which was shocking. Yeah. Shocker. Um, at first, I was like, oh, why have they done that? That's a bit dumb. But, I don't know. It made sense, I guess. Sure. Yeah, it's fine. It seemed like, the thing with Survivor Series, it seemed like a throwaway pay-per-view. Yeah. Because realistically, no one truly <laughs> believes in Raw vs. SmackDown yet. Yeah, it's like too I know too we touched on it a few weeks ago, but it doesn't make it any less true. Like, I didn't care. No, same. I, I was rooting for SmackDown to win every match, basically. Yeah. Because I prefer it as a show, but <laughs> same. I don't care. Like, I cared more about the IC title match and the Cruiserweight title match. Yeah, it's just like, there's no stakes in it. So if, if we no, win... No, you're right. There's, if, no, there's no reason to care. Yeah, so if we win, then we, we're the winners. Yeah. Yeah, if, if we like, win, if we, then if we lose, Stephanie then, can yeah. brag on Raw or Shane can brag on SmackDown. Like, yeah. well, we don't care. Yeah. Like, none of us care. Yeah, like, it's, it's weird. Not, the brand split hasn't been going on long enough for us to... But I mean, I know we all prefer SmackDown. Yep. <laughs> that's <laughs> Pretty much. universal. Yeah, yeah. But, it doesn't mean we care if they win or lose these matches against Raw. Give it a year. Yeah, give it, give it give a, a year. Bit of time. Year. We'll give it time to breathe. Agreed. Um, so yeah. last week they could probably, you know, muster up enough talent from both rosters to have Raw versus Raw and SmackDown versus SmackDown matches. It doesn't really. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so yeah, decent match, good match. Um, and yeah, what do we have for predictions in that one? Sorry, I've got to look between two different pages here. That's why it's taking me that while. Um, okay, so you and Steve both said Ward wins. You both get a point. Uh, Bing. I did smack down, so I get nothing. So it's 1-0. So this fun. was difficult to call. It was a bit. <laughs> um, right, next. Next match. Sorry. Thing with the pages. Okay, so next match was uh, Kalista versus Lee Brian Kendrick for the Cruiserweight Championship. It seemed like the most obvious result in the world. Um, and yeah, it wasn't. It was the other one. Because <laughs> still angry. Yeah, it makes no sense. At this garbage booking. Yeah. The Cruiserweights are going to be on 205 Live, which is being filmed straight after SmackDown, mm-hmm. starting next week. So have the Cruiserweights move to SmackDown. They'll be better utilised there. Um, you'll have a better commentator who understands what he's talking about with these guys. <laughs> yep. And you feel, even though it's still WWE, that they would have a little bit more creative freedom on SmackDown. Yeah, I think so. Instead, you have fucking Baron Corbin come down and continue this feud that nobody cares about. Yeah. And they proved it on SmackDown this week because like, no, there was no reaction for it. No one cares. Pretty much. So what you do is you ruin, and it was a great match up until then. It was great, I yeah. I just want to say. Very um, good. I thought, they, the, despite them being two completely different styles, I, thought, I mean, this is the beauty of the Cruiserweight division. You can have 
um, and the Cruiserweight Classic proved it. Oh, yeah. You can have two completely different styles and it worked very well and it did work very well in this instance. Yep. Um, crowd weren't super into it, but they never are. Yeah, yeah. Well. But that's the main roster crowd for you. Yeah. Ignorant. Yeah. It's just, no, no. For the casuals. <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, I thought it was a great match and it was, it was really ruined. Um, by the interference from Baron Corbin, I just thought it was so cheap. And yeah. again, it felt like they hadn't thought about what they would do if the cruiserweights did go to SmackDown. Um, and they so they gave us what nobody asked for, what yeah. nobody wanted. Pretty much, um, I feel bad for Kalisto and just Baron Corbin in general, just because they win the feud no one cares about when they are like two talented guys. But yeah, that's a crap age, wasn't it? Terrible way to end it. Absolutely yeah. awful. Just don't, um, have, don't have main, main roster guys interfering with cruiser rates. So, and this dampened Bad my times. interest even less. Even, <laughs> yeah. even more sorry in Survivor Series. Yeah. Because they had ruined the IC title match, which I was so excited for. Mm-hmm. And they ruined the cruiserweight title match that I was really excited for. Yeah. And they were the matches that Happy. I was like, okay, I'm, these are the, this is, because again, they had real implications as to what could happen going forward. Yeah, exactly. Whereas the other matches didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've ruined both of them, so kudos to WWE. Real good. Yeah, thanks for that. So yeah, we all said Kalisto would win that, obviously, and we're all wrong. So no points. Um, so that brings us to uh, our 5-on-5 five five men's Survivor Series elimination match. Uh, we have Braun Strowman, Seth Rollins, Chris Jericho, Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, Shane McMahon, uh, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton with Jamie Dogworth at ringside. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I thought it was good. I thought it was a good match. It's supposed to be my favorite match out of the night. I, I I did think it was good. I I I think the reason I like the tag team one so much is because of the way it flowed. Yeah, it was um, good. That's I, I do think this was this was good. It, yeah, it was weird because it it felt it felt like a big deal because of the the wrestlers that are in the match. Yeah, not from a result standpoint because well, again we don't care about. If Raw wins or whether SmackDown wins. <laughs> yeah, it was cool to see the Wyatt standing tall, finally getting a good victory in the pay-per-view. Hooray. Um, even if Randy Orton was kind of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> We're not like I'm Randy Orton, but still. I'm still waiting for this this turn to happen, and it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen eventually. We're sure. Uh, but it's a cool match. Had some cool spots. I uh, had um, uh, Shane McMahon jumping onto Braun Strowman on the table, which I think you might have said on the stream would happen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, that was cool. Uh, what was less cool was Shane jumping from corner to corner onto Roman Reigns. Um, it's cool looking, but then he got like a really bad concussion and that sucks. Um, Do you see Randy Orton break character? I did, yeah. I didn't say it at the time, but I saw it on like, Twitter. Yeah, I, I saw it. I saw, well, I saw it on Twitter before. Mm. Um, and I was like, oh, because I saw Randy Orton tweeted something about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, somebody tweeted Randy and Randy responded. Mm. So I was like, what's this about? So I looked out for it and yeah, you see him go outside when Shane takes that horrific bump yeah uh, it didn't look bad in real time but then when you see it back it's like yeah well, Shane was out of it yeah he was he had his shoulder as well which obviously was, wasn't intentional yeah. so ref stopped counting and then when he realised what was going on it's like oh crap okay <laughs> Shane <laughs> Shane eliminated. get him out of here now yeah seriously uh, so Randy Orton went outside the ring and basically went and spoke to Shane's kids to tell him that he was going to be okay yeah yeah which I thought was uh, a great move safety yeah. first all the time good guy Randy thank good you good guy Randy for sure yeah um, um, yeah safety first always Absolutely. Um, at, the, at the time, I was kind of rode for Reigns because he looked like he dd would himself. <laughs> like that right in his head. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah. Luckily, he's okay. Obviously, he came back on, on SmackDown. It was fine. Um, thank goodness. Um, and yeah, other than that, good match. It was a cool moment as well. Uh, when Dean, after Dean almost got eliminated, uh, he came back to be a AJ Stars and that uh, like a Shield reunion and Powerbomb AJ Stars would take through the uh, announce table. Yeah. Uh, cool. I like the Shield reunion, reunion stuff. Yeah, same. Um, you know, you do. We do get these cool little moments every now and then. Yeah. But I still think it's too soon for a full reunion. Yeah, same. People are like, "Oh, the Shield, the Shield," <laughs> but they've not really been broken up that long. Yeah, not really. Um, around, I don't. I get that the Shield were good. Right? Yep. And obviously, it's given us three really good superstars yeah. since. But were they around long enough to really cement? It's not like the NWO. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. It's not like DX <laughs> or The Horseman or someone like that. Yeah, they were, they were good, but I'm not, you know, itching for them to go back together. Yeah, I mean, eventually, yeah, sure. Sure, yeah. But yeah, right now, it's cool seeing like that one-off kind of thing. It's fine. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, so the end, and last three people alive, or well, last two people alive were alive. Uh, alive. <laughs> last two people standing were um, Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt, with the help of um, Luke Harper, who also turned up. We must have we must have been under the ring for a long time. <laughs> Speaking of under the ring, James Ellsworth oh, helps eliminate Braun Strowman by count out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after the after the change jumped on uh, Braun, I just climbed into the ring for the same count. Uh, saw a pair of hands coming from under the ring, to grab his leg, and it was James Ellsworth, and yeah. he got thrown through some tables. <laughs> for certainly did. Yeah, he got flung as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thrown. Just just completely flung through tables. <laughs> yeah, off the stage. <clears throat> so yeah, that was cool. Um, also. Uh, uh, Kevin Owens used the list of Jericho as a weapon that disqualified him, uh, which played into uh, Monday Night Raw um, highlight reel segment, which is very funny. Because they're like, uh, look, look like Chris Jericho was shouting at Kevin Owens for costing him the match. It's like, oh, you cost such a match because he used my list as a weapon. Um, but no, they're both like, oh, both, there's one person to blame. And Kevin's like, yeah, there is one person to blame. And it's like, pause, Roman Reigns. <laughs> and then the Hulk is like, yeah, okay, cool. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice trolling. Good job. Yeah. You got me. Uh, but yeah, great match otherwise. Very cool. Um, so that brings us to our main events. Mm, Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Wait, we didn't, you didn't say one. Oh, yeah. Um, so right now one. So, which uh, Steve had, neither of us did. So that's right now. Steve is in the lead with two points. And uh, you've got one. I've got zero still. <laughs> <laughs> to brings us to our last, uh, last event of the evening. Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Um... Yeah, got a book one, didn't he? Very quickly. <laughs> he wanted like a minute. Uh, I have to be honest, I was fine with it. Mm, I understood why they did it. Mm, I mean, it's fine if Goldberg was injured. Like, I know there's some he concern. He wasn't injured. Not mm. going into the match. No. That's what some, I've read. Yeah, same. But there's, there's some, concern with that. some concern over his shoulder, because apparently he injured it uh, on Raw. Um, but, yeah, and I thought maybe that's why they did it, but no. They just did it to make him look strong. But it kind of sucks because like Brock Lesnar's been such a dominant force. Now it was interesting because you texted me the day after when we were talking about Survivor Series, yeah. and you said it halts Brock's momentum. Now I wanted to ask you, what <laughs> momentum is this that you speak of? When he's, he's beat the Undertaker streak, he's like beat John Cena, thrown him around, super dominant against John Cena, and now it's just like a super huge force in WWE. He just loses in like two minutes to an old man. Now <laughs> the old man. What you have to remember here is that this was Goldberg's character in WCW. Yeah, I know. And he's beat some of the biggest names in professional wrestling history in... I mean, I saw Goldberg beat Bam Bam Bigelow in less time <laughs> live in Birmingham. Oh, nice. Um, and um, I when, when I saw it, I was like, okay, I understood why they've done this. They did it for the same reason they had Brock Lesnar beat the street. To get yeah. people talking, and it most certainly has got people talking. Yeah, I guess. Um, whether it be people, people are always going to be have a, a divided opinion. Yeah, true. You're going to have the MMA, UFC contingent who are always going to root for Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have the old school wrestling. I mean, uh, look at when we were doing the stream on Sunday, and Rubik said that no, was it Rubik? Can't be. Somebody in the stream um, said that their dad. Um, was psyched for WWE oh, yeah. for Survivor Series because Goldberg was in it first time in 12 years. True. So you're going to have that contingent of people who were going to be excited to see Goldberg and what they were used to seeing Goldberg do was destroy people in two minutes. Yeah, that's true. Now, I understand that Brock is made to be this destroyer, the conqueror and all this sort of stuff. But what better way to have somebody beat the conqueror than by conquering him? But it's like, imagine... Goldberg's fucking massive, by the way. He is, he's huge. Like, he's got the body of a 30-year-old. Yeah. But imagine how cool it would have been having someone like, I don't know, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Brock Lesnar and having this Brock Lesnar versus undefeated monster and then having Shinsuke beat Brock Lesnar like a up, huge upset and people would have gone, whoa, Jesus Christ, Shinsuke Nakamura is awesome. why does Brock awesome. have to be the benchmark? I don't know. Why does he? Because <laughs> he, he does, he's not... He, he All Brock is is a special attraction. That's yeah. what Goldberg is. And they're they're going to... I mean, I... Um, on Raw, obviously, Goldberg is going to be in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, I anticipate Brock is going to cost Goldberg at the Royal Rumble. Probably. And then they'll fight again at WrestleMania. And then there's a very good chance that both of them might ride off into the sunset. Probably, yeah. I'm not sure how long Brock's deal is, but, um, you know, Goldberg it's certainly... Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dick jokes everywhere. Dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> they were perfectly as well. I'm not sure how long <laughs> Brock's deal is. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, I'm not sure how much longer <laughs> Brock has left on his current contract. <laughs> Both on holding the giggles. Giant <laughs> deal. <laughs> Uh, but you know what I mean, though, right? It's yeah, like, anyway. I, I don't think... I don't see Brock as champion again, put it that way. Yeah, probably not. Um, um, and I don't see... I don't see him as that, the, the measuring stick. I don't see him as, oh, but, yeah, you can have Nakamura. Yeah, you could have Nakamura go and beat Brock Lesnar. Well, what does it mean? It means Nakamura's super good. <laughs> Nakamura could... Yeah, but I think Samoa Joe now is more... But he's now more of a threat to Nakamura than Brock is. Yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was, just fi- I was fine with it, but I'm not a Brock fan. Yeah, yeah, same. Um, I'm not really. Fine, and, yeah. uh, don't, get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I'm not a Goldberg fan, but uh, it was awesome. I got goosebumps when he, when Goldberg beat him so quickly. Yeah, I was like, this that is awesome. That is the Goldberg I want to see. <laughs> Fair play. I was kind of like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was ridiculous <laughs> the amount of build up they had. Yeah, so much build up. Um, like, oh, that was just it. Just for you know a minute sixty seconds. What? Uh, I kind of saw it coming because I looked at the end, length of the video like 10 minutes left yeah. left for the match I was like oh well this is going to be long then isn't it yeah. it's, I mean yeah it was ridiculous just the amount of build up for the amount of match we got Yeah. but were they ever <laughs> going to put on a technical masterclass it would be they would be punching kicks yeah pretty much yeah you a couple of suplexes and a bit of throwing around yeah Um. so you'd either get that for a typical Brock match and that's what else was good about it it wasn't a typical Brock match yeah true so yeah so um, you and Steve both said Goldberg win that. I said Brock for whatever reason. Um, so I get zero points. It ended up um, you get two, but Steve gets three. So Steve yeah. wins that one. Um, so, uh, so neither of us get a point. So Steve's also in this in this position because he's the the only other one who's been <laughs> doing predictions with us. Like, yeah. When he's guested on the show, so uh, pretty much Steve, Steve is there to, to take points away from us basically. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, uh, he's got three points so far. Steve, uh, yeah, good job, Steve. He's been, he's been, pretty well, to be fair. Been, yeah, the amount of time he's been on, he's probably got more wins and yeah, losses. He's, he's <laughs> his loss record is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Good job, Steve. Good effort. So yeah, I've got zero points for that one. Damn. That is, so we've had two clean sweeps. You have <laughs> losses. You have no, <laughs> yeah. no correct predictions yeah, don't, for don't, Survivor Series. Yeah, don't put your money on my bets. What if I bet? Bet the opposite and you'll probably win. You'll probably get it right. <laughs> so going back to going back to Brock Goldberg, it, it was always going to divide opinion. Yeah, for sure. If Brock would have won, it would have been like, okay, well, why's Goldberg come back? What's the point? Yeah, Goldberg so. wins. Oh, but Goldberg's an old man. Well, Brock isn't exactly a spring chicken. Yeah, I okay, guess yeah, true. You're uh, right. And Goldberg is in incredible shape. It's not like Ric Flair beating <laughs> yeah. Brock Lesnar in two and a half minutes, or <laughs> Hulk Hogan beating Brock Lesnar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. It makes sense. Um, and if I mean I th- my reasoning for picking Goldberg in my predictions was that he was one and done but he's not yeah I guess not but apparently this was Goldberg's idea Goldberg and Vince McMahon's idea uh, sorry Brock and Vince McMahon's idea to yeah. have Goldberg go over like that fair play because there's money in Goldberg going forward and I agree there is yeah fair play to him cool um, so yeah I guess that brings us to uh, Warren Smackdown yeah and I think we need to talk about Raw yeah uh, well, which you know, Goldberg's going to be the Raw and which we touched on um, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho are uh, still best friends yep who's uh, going for the title I don't even think I watched Raw oh so uh, in, in the end of the night the main event was uh, Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens in the no disqualification match with uh, Chris Jericho band from ringside and it was a really good match actually I recommend watching it um, yeah so tables and chairs everywhere for the title for the title yep yeah. tables and chairs everywhere uh, Seth jumped off a tall thing <laughs> um, it was great um, as Seth was throwing Kevin Owens back towards the ring um, a fan with his Burger King car mask, which is hilarious, um, attacks. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw this. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, attacks um, uh, Seth Rollins. And uh, it turned out it was Chris Jericho. Oh, my goodness. In the oh, Sin Cara mask. Sink car mask. Shots fired. Which is hilarious. Um, but uh, yeah, apparently uh, Chris Jericho commented on it on this podcast. I've got a quote here, actually. Um, it says, With the Sin Cara mask, which is an FU to the internet community that knows everything but doesn't know S. Uh, Sin Cara, that's uh, lovely shit. Oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, I yeah, cleared it up for you because they've, they've uh, blurred it out there. <laughs> 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 You're welcome, internet. Um, Sin says, uh, Sin Cara is a great guy and a great friend of mine. He actually lent me the mask. So thanks to Sin Cara for lending me the mask and so that I could pull the swerve. So there you go. It was all, all friends there, WWE. <laughs> uh, I still think Sin Cara is the hardest man on the planet. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> Uh, so yeah that, that was funny expect the list of Cara to debut <laughs> next week <laughs> yeah yeah seriously uh, but yeah it's a good match uh, Kevin Owens obviously won uh, yeah good times uh, I've, I have seen Smackdown or at least most of it 
Yeah. Um, I would also uh, worth mentioning uh, Swan is the new which one is the new number one contender for uh, the Gridway title. Good. And he's going to in fact I knew that because he's going to fight for it on 205 Live. He is. Um, next week on his debut. Yeah. I'd love him to win it. Yeah, me too. In, I would go as far as saying he's the most over of the cruiserweights. Yeah, probably. I mean, Kendrick for sure. Um, yeah, that, that's a really cool uh, triple threat match. Him, uh, GJP and Noam Dar. Uh, and yeah, it was a cool match. Was it good? Yeah, good match. Oh, okay, I'll go back and watch that. Good stuff. Crowd still in care because ugh, <sighs> they suck. But, I yeah. hope 205 Live is different. Me too. I think they should take them out of that environment completely. Yeah, I mean, they just record it the same place they do NXT. Yeah, I'll yeah. go back and full sale. Yeah, makes sense. Um, he's still WWE, he's still in WWE, still getting incredible production. Yeah. Uh, still getting unbelievable exposure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I own more NXT t-shirts than I do main roster t-shirts, so... Uh, cool. Yeah, me too. Tells you everything you know about the main roster. <laughs> yeah. Care, but, yeah, um, I what, would what? take the Cruiserweights out of that environment, I really would. Yeah, same. Uh, awesome that Noam Dar's getting some exposure on TV, though. Yeah, very cool. I never know that. Uh, yeah, SmackDown. Uh, Tyler's of SmackDown, Ellsworth, the ladder match with AJ Styles. Uh, one due to interference from Dean Ambrose. He was was ejected from the building like three times and kept coming back. Incredibly funny, though. Yeah, it's very uh, funny. You know, I, I, that was so good. Like, <laughs> yeah. and it was Shane's reaction as well. So it <laughs> yeah. worked so well. It was perfect. Like the, the comedy timing from both. Yeah, like cool. Dean Ambrose appearing out of nowhere, like once with a pizza, once as the Mountie, <laughs> and it was just it was brilliantly funny. And Shane's yeah. reaction every time, like him just losing the plot that <laughs> Dean Ambrose was still <laughs> coming back, and yeah. uh, it was it was gold. If you haven't. Yeah, go just watch them highlights if you can find it's them re- on the internet just watch them because it was really funny yeah it was wonderful that um, I liked at the start as well when he exited him he left the ring <laughs> down the down the aisle and after, after like your, the end he just turned up behind him and was like <laughs> yeah. Him, yeah, yeah yeah that's cool wasn't it yeah <laughs> that's funny it's like when Shane ejected him, ejected him from the building the first time and then Dean Ambrose said can I just get my coat and then Shane was like no you don't need to go <laughs> yes. I got rid of him then in the backstage segment, Dean Ambrose turned up with pizza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then Becky Lynch made a pizza joke, and Dean Ambrose, you could hear him in the background, went, I heard it, I loved it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he almost looked like he was about to lose it, like, <laughs> laughing-wise, when yeah. he did his Mountie line. Oh, yeah. He's like, on the Mountie. And the Mountie always gets him. It looked like he was just about... <laughs> at him and Daniel Bryan, they both of them looked like they were about to just go. Yeah. It's very funny. I like Dean a lot. Um, very funny this week. Very funny. Um, so what else happened uh, oh Kalisto and Miz had the title match uh, with the IT title guess um, what yeah Corbin, Corbin interfe- inter- interfered kind of he kind of missed his cue <laughs> camera, camera panned over to nothing he's like oh <laughs> Kalisto kind of stopped and like, okay I'll carry on I guess then jumped off on did like a nothing move and then Baron Corbin turned up was like oh I'm here now I'm here to interfere and uh, yeah Miz won and Ziggler attacked Miz after on, on the stage yeah, and they're having a rematch at TLC. Yes, another match. And, but it's going to be the last one, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, last yeah. one this year. <laughs> yeah. Until um, January. And then we had Baron Corbin versus Kane, because, you know, a punishment for <laughs> Baron Corbin interfering and all that. And of course. And Kalisto interfered to no crowd reaction. Yeah. Because guess what? Nobody cares. Nobody cares about this feud, yeah. The SmackDown sh- 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 Cruiserweight division should be a thing. Yep. But it isn't a thing, is it? It's not. Shaboyly fucked it up. You fucked it up. You fucked up. You fucked up. Um, but yeah, that was the only match. So after the match, um, they tried to attack Corbin with a chair, which made me think, oh, there's a chairs match at TLC then. They're going to have. Oh, <laughs> I don't even think about that. But definitely that's going to happen yep. now. Yeah. I hate that. I hate but, it so much. Yeah, same. Put them in the show. The chairs great. match. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Why Especially, do we watch this? I don't, I don't know. We're idiots. The chairs match. <laughs> we can't even have that on that two games. We just have to have an extreme rules match and just use chairs. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. God damn you, WWE. Uh, it's dumb. Um, what else happened? Oh, there's a tag team turmoil, turmoil number one contender match. Good match as well, actually. Yeah, it's alright. Uh, Hype Bros beat the Ascension. Uh, Bujango beat the Hype Bros. American Alpha beat the Bujango and World Villains and the Usos. Uh, all basically set up... Uh, uh, American Alpha versus Usos which was the longest lasting kind of match that was, that was there mm-hmm. and then after the match um, Bray Wyatt Randy Orton and Luke Harper appeared on the Titantron as they do and challenged them to a match next week and whoever wins that match will be the more contenders I don't want the Wyatts to win the tag team titles not Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt yeah it makes more sense if it was Randy Orton and Luke Harper no I don't want Randy Orton to win it at all oh yeah maybe Luke Harper and Eric Rowan if they're still around um I don't know. But yeah. What I'm hoping for is um, 
How long do you see this Randy Orton thing going on for with the Whites? Uh, until it rumble, maybe. You think? That yeah, long? probably. See, I'm, I'm sort of hoping for Randy Orton to, you know, mm. ruin their tag team match next week. Oh, maybe, yeah. And like American <laughs> Alpha win. I feel American like Alpha need their shine. I know they. they do. I know they're gonna get it eventually. Yeah. I do. I just feel like if they were gonna do a short thing with Randy Orton, they would have done it by now. So it means they're kind of dragging it out now until whatever the next big baby view is. Because then, if you did it now, you could have Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt at TLC. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. But, that could happen. But it'd be, t- it'd be a typical WWE thing to do to have them win the tag team titles. <laughs> I could just... It, it annoys yeah. me. It's, it's yeah. such a WWE thing to do. And I don't want that to happen. And I don't want this Randy Orton thing to happen at all. But... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't mind it. I don't hate it as much as I thought I would. Yeah, but we see through it. We do see we through it. We really see through it. Yeah. It's not the most unless transparent they, garbage ever. It's like we know what's going to happen. We know it's coming. Yeah, unless they swerve us and make it so it, he is really with the why it's. Hey, know, if they do well, that, more power to them because yeah, yeah. we called it ages ago <laughs> yeah. that Randy Orton was just going to screw Bray Wyatt over eventually. Mm-hmm. My fear with this is that Randy Orton is Bray Wyatt comes out of this like he always does. The loser, yeah. And then what for Bray Wyatt? Yeah, yeah, that's always out in there. Wyatt stands all the Survivor Series. I don't know if this is just to continue Randy Orton's thing of being a sole survivor at Survivor Series or not. Maybe, yeah. But uh, it was good to see Bray Wyatt standing tall at Survivor Series. That was cool. But I, I've i lost so much faith, not so much in Bray Wyatt, but in the booking of Bray Wyatt, that I just don't think anything's going to come of it. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. Bray Wyatt to come out, the coming out, come out worse. Yeah, I don't know. I got a hope for the new SmackDown roster split thing that you know they'll do something a bit different and have Bray go over and be a, like a big top guy. But it looked like that was going to be the case at the start of the split because yeah. Bray Wyatt was involved in the title scene and he was. Yeah. They had that little thing with Dean Ambrose and then nothing ever happened. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, then the main event was uh, obviously AJ Styles versus James James Ell- James Ellsworth. I can talk. James Jellsworth. <laughs> Elmer Stageworth, Jamesworth. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was alright. It was a thing. Very gimmicky match, obviously. That had to be, really. Um, so AJ Styles got his foot trapped in the ropes at the end of it. Um, where a super kick by uh, James Ellsworth. No chin music. Real name. No chin music. And uh, yeah, that was just one. So yay. He's got, he's got a contract now, I guess. Well, I, I, I knew he'd win because yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> we, we knew he'd been signed in the week. Yeah, yeah. He's probably not that bad a wrestler. Yeah. He's just so small. Yeah, it's just, I don't know what they're going to do with him. I mean, this thing, this thing with Dean Ambrose can't last forever. No, it's like, the, once it's over, it's like, then what did he do? That, I think it's going to lead to a Dean Ambrose heel turn. I'm, I'm sticking with that because I think that's what's going to happen. But Maybe. Because they'll, because Ellsworth now, what, is he going to have a title shot or something? I don't know. Oh yeah, he's going to have a title, yeah, because he put his, title, his contract on the line. It's like, if he wins... If he loses, then he's out of WWE. But if he wins, he gets a title shot. He gets contract and a title shot for with the. Uh, Dean Ambrose is going to cost him that title shot. Hmm. Maybe. Um. He'll. He'll be. It would be sort of like a no more Mister Nice Guy type thing. Um. Yeah, and I think that's maybe what's going to happen. Hmm. Interesting prediction. Because you know, Ellsworth is pretty over. Yeah, uh, he is. As ridiculous as it is, <laughs> he is. Yeah. Um. Uh, you know what? Who knows? Why we even do predictions? Because. <laughs> What yeah, we want to happen and what does happen are two very, very different things. Yeah, we never get what we want. Wrestling fans never get what they want. So, um... <laughs> you don't want what, I, what you think you want. You want what I want. <laughs> Famous Vince McMahon quote. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I I don't mind seeing Ellsworth on TV. I thought the joke was up a couple of weeks back, but he's going to be around for a while, it would seem. So, yeah, we'll see. It's fine, yeah. It's, it's fine for now, but he can't be now. in the main event scene for too long. <laughs> yeah. But then there's the question of then what happens. Then what? Him. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll hang out with Apollo Crews. Just, <laughs> just sitting backstage doing, not, doing nothing. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. yeah, Apollo Crews hasn't been on SmackDown in ages. He hasn't. War guy. Bad times. Yeah. So that was the week in wrestling. Yep. Now it's time <laughs> for our favourite segment of the show. Yay. This week's episode of the Sunny and Finn Show is brought to you by the letter. We need a new title for that. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Cue the music. There's music now. This the, yeah. <laughs> I know, I'll put music. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Pick a letter. Um, Pick a category. Uh, w. 
for wrestling. <laughs> the dubs. It's quite a few W's. Found one straight away. Nice. Who? 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 Jim Jan 19 Heart. Is that the one? Who? Who? It's from who knows what. <laughs> from who? No, no. <laughs> Wait, who knows what? From who knows where? Is uh, the wrestler called who? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More than 50 years after comedians Abbott and Costello famously wondered who? 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 <laughs> <coughs> was on first base the mysterious athlete finally fled the baseball diamond in favour of a career in sports entertainment known simply as who <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> the masked superstar began his brief and befooding WWE career in career <laughs> career, <laughs> uh, career in 1996 with his anvil-shaped chest and impressive wrestling acumen, who immediately struck fear into the WWE locker room. <laughs> he, <wasn't it. laughs> he, he also confused broadcasters greatly. Typical banter during a Who match. Vince McMahon. The question is, who is in the ring? Mr. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly who is in the ring? Jim Ross. Jim Ross. What the actually on there? Jim Ross. <laughs> Who's re- <laughs> so funny? You can't even read it. <laughs> Who's the referee for this match? It's my joke. Oh yeah, very good. <laughs> no, who's wrestling? Yeah, who's who's wrestling? Great banter from the comments. Yeah, great. <laughs> Luckily, the WWE broadcast team didn't have to fumble over whose identity for long. After coming up short against the likes of Savio Vega and Jake the Snake Roberts, who realised he didn't Ooh. have the heart who, who didn't have the heart to be a WWE superstar. The heart, get it? No. Do you know, do you know, it's Jim Dan Heart. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Was it? Yeah. I know, you know this. I know this. I know I, I occasionally know wrestling things. How do I know how do I know how do I know it not you you know it? What? <laughs> I've never even heard of who. Who? It's very short lived. <laughs> Well, obviously. Yeah. Uh, he soon left WWE and retreated back to his home in who knows where. Who knows where? I guess that might be right as uh, the anvil shaped chest. chest. It is right, I know. It's one of the, one of the few useless knowledge, wrestling knowledge things I know. Well, how do you know this? I don't know. It's one of those things you see on YouTube and any useless wrestling facts. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, do you remember that? <laughs> AKA who? Okay. This week's episode of the Sunny Fincher is brought to you by the letter W. <laughs> uh, that was a thing. I love that, se- I love that segment. I <laughs> love reading that little bit out of the WWE Encyclopedia every week. It's great, yeah. I love it. Just just so we can... If you, I mean, if you're not a wrestling fan and you listen to this video, video game stuff but stick with us for the wrestling stuff anyway, we just like to show you how ridiculous wrestling actually has been over the course of... <laughs> Pretty f- many, many years. Pretty freaking ridiculous. Yep. <laughs> this has been episode 40 of the Sunny and Finn Show. Thank you for sticking with us for 40 episodes. Yes, thank you. Here's to 40 more. Yay. And more than that. And more than that, yeah. Please go subscribe <laughs> to our podcast on iTunes. Yep. Follow us on SoundCloud and you can listen to us on any other podcast service across most devices. Yeah. <coughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel <laughs> youtube.com forward slash Sunny Finn Play yep. uh, you can see you can hear the podcast there every week mm-hmm. and we are streaming lots and lots yes and there's a lot more content to come so much more you can also follow us on twitch.tv forward slash Sunny Finn Play yep uh, we're going to try and grow that channel also yep but for now this is the Sunny and Finn Show we are a weekly wrestling and video game podcast that posts every single Friday across podcast services Everywhere. Everywhere. I'm Sunny. I'm Finn. And we will speak to you next time. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Woo. 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 Divas. Divas. Divas.